Hello everyone, Grandpa Ron here again. I hope you're all uh, well and happy and uh, surviving the uh, uh, self-imposed quarantines. Uh, I was watching a TV show the other day I, ha I hadn't seen before. It was about uh, dredging for gold up in uh, Alaska, I guess. And I started to think about uh, when I was in Alaska as a little, a little boy, uh, my parents did some gold panning up there. There's a lot of public uh, prospecting sites where you can go and pan for gold for free. And so every once in a while on uh, weekends in the summer, they'd go and uh, pan for gold. And it was quite a bit of work. Uh, you had to dig the dirt. They had places where you could dig the dirt. It was all free, of course. And then you'd uh, take the dirt down uh, in buckets down to the water's edge and fill up your gold pan with the dirt. And then you would vigorously <laughs> shake the pan and let the water wash the uh, dirt away. The gold, being heavier, would eventually sink down to the bottom. I've got a few home movies of that and uh, my parents did find uh, a little bit of gold. It was kind of exciting, you know, to do all that work and then down at the bottom you see uh, some little gold flakes and specks and every once in a while maybe a, a piece big enough to be called a nugget, I guess. Some of the guys in my dad's outfit actually built they called them sluice boxes where they could process a lot of dirt <clears throat> buckets full at a time and they'd have uh, water uh, come up over the top and uh, wash dirt away and then they'd have uh, baffles uh, spaced out along there where uh, they would catch the gold and those guys put a lot of effort into it. They got uh, they got more gold. They got quite a bit of gold, but there was a, a lot of effort in it, and uh, you didn't get gold every single time. You know, you filled your pan up, but uh, usually there was a little bit of color in there and some gold. Um, then we also saw the dredging operations up there. I guess Fairbanks in the 40s was uh, the gold prospecting center of the of Alaska. That's where we were stationed and uh, they had these huge dredges. They'd wash the whole mountain away uh, going after that gold. They processed uh, you know thousands of tons of uh, ore to get uh, of dirt to get to the gold. And uh, so I've got a couple of shots of some of the old equipment. I took my grandkids on a cruise up to Alaska. We didn't go to Fairbanks, but we got to take a little tour where they got to pan some gold. Of course, uh, the gold pans had been seeded. You know, the dirt was already in them, and the, they had, uh, you know, hidden a few uh, pieces of gold in each pan and they all got some I guess each one of them got uh, you know 15 or 20 dollars worth of a little gold flakes in their pan but they learned how to do it and you know it was work and got a tour got to see some of the old equipment uh, that's no longer used nowadays but uh, it was very interesting a lot of work a lot of effort uh, you know physically demanding had to have a lot of patience to to uh, finally get the gold, and uh, sometimes frustrating, but usually uh, very rewarding. And uh, you can still do that today. There's uh, public gold plan panning uh, areas in Alaska you can go to, and other parts of the country. But very interesting. But uh, you know, during the coronavirus thing, I was also thinking about what the Bible says about gold. And uh, 
it says that uh, it's uh, much more beneficial to man to search for God's wisdom and knowledge than to go after gold. That God's wisdom and knowledge is much more valuable than having gold. You know, the Bible says that uh, God has hidden a lot of things. He uh, enjoys hiding things. But uh, he, re he reveals things to man when we search for it. And the things he's revealed to man uh, belongs to us forever. I mean, it, it becomes ours, you know. And so just like panning for gold, searching God's word is uh, very demanding. If you're going to be profitable at it, you've got to spend a lot of time at it. It's uh, physically demanding. Uh, you know, it'd be a lot easier to go out and play and watch video games and all that during this coronavirus thing. But God has given us an opportunity here to spend more time looking for gold nuggets in His Holy Word. I don't know how many people have taken advantage of that, but uh, I know there's some, because I some friends of mine have done it. And um, they search the Scripture each day and uh, look for these little gold nuggets that God has in His Word. You know, sometimes some of the nuggets aren't readily apparent um, but over time, you start to see things fall into place, and eventually you go, Eureka! <laughs> yeah, there's a gold nugget. I can, uh, I can apply that. And the Bible also says that uh, it's gold that's going to matter in eternity. It talks about, uh, you know, man building a house, or building a house on foundation uh, you can use wood hay stubble gold precious stones but in revelation it says that uh, eventually all that's going to be tested by fire and that uh, whatever's burned up is gone and if you've used that material you're going to suffer loss but the things that are made of gold and precious stones that'll withstand the fire and uh, you will enjoy gain from that so the search for God's wisdom and knowledge is much more valuable in eternity than a search for physical gold but uh, and it can be very enjoyable but it does take does take work so I hope uh, while we're still cooped up with this coronavirus thing, you'll take the opportunity to search God's Word and look for those golden, golden nuggets of wisdom and knowledge. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.